This sounds like an exaggeration, but it's no BS. You have the potential to literally become whoever you want. We're talking about how you can master shifting your identity. Now, if you know how to do this, you have the potential to literally do whatever you set your mind on. You want to become more charismatic, identity shifting. You want to make more money, identity shifting. Now, if you don't know what's in this video, you're going to wake up year after year wondering why you're not further ahead. Maybe you see other people crushing it and you wonder what's their secret? What do they got? In this video, I want to give you some higher level perspectives on shifting your identity. And then, you know, I'll try and give you a few techniques that you can walk away and use. So you're walking away with something tangible. So what is this? What is identity shifting? A good place to start is old school. Maxwell Maltz, psychocybernetics. Now, Maxwell Maltz was a plastic surgeon and people would come to him. They wanted to look a certain way. So they'd go to Maxwell Maltz and he'd fix their appearance. Now, these people thought that if they fixed their appearance, they would internally feel amazing. Right? It makes sense too. Like you've probably thought if I just didn't have my nose the size it was, I could feel beautiful. Or if my face was a bit more snatched, then I would get the attention I want. Like most people who want plastic surgery, it kind of follows the same story. If I look this way, I can feel that way. People will treat me that way. And for some people, it did work. But what was more interesting for him and why he actually switched and became a psychologist is no matter what surgery he did on people, they still internally felt awful. They felt ugly inside. What he realized is that the patient's self-image mattered more than the results they got. Even when he made them objectively beautiful, if the patient still maintained the belief that I'm the ugly duckling, I can't look myself in the mirror and everyone notices my big nose. No matter what surgery they did, it didn't matter. In other words, the patient's internal image mattered more than their external perception. Unless the internal identity shifted, nothing on the external had any impact. So what is shifting your identity? Identity shifting is when you make the decision to change in order to get closer to the ideal version of you. And in doing so, you start to become this person that you've always imagined. There's an urban legend that if you have a goldfish in a small bowl, it will never outgrow the bowl's size. But if you put that same goldfish in a much bigger bowl or a fish tank, it will grow and grow until it reaches the size of the tank. Now, here's where we're going with that. As you have a tank, whether you realize it or not, that tank is your identity. Okay, this is what's placing limits or breaking through limitations for you. A lot of times you didn't even set it yourself. It's set by the people around you, society, teachers, parents growing up. So let's talk about why it's so hard for us to change and why you get stuck in the past versions of yourself. I don't like this language of becoming someone new because that's sort of outrunning yourself. And that's just like Maxwell Maltz realized with the plastic surgery that people were trying to like become someone new physically and then it gave them internal permission to feel a certain way. Now here's what I'm more of a fan of is realizing that a lot of what we're projecting out into the world or behaving a certain way is not our true selves. Identity shifting is really about like identity connecting, connecting to that core essence that doesn't change. So it's not necessarily about like taking on these tactics and these routines and becoming this like completely new person. That's a really sexy thing to buy into. And to the degree you buy into it, I find is where it creates a lot of dissonance because you're almost rejecting the true self. You're saying, no, shut up, get away. I need to become someone new because you're not worthy enough. You're not good enough. What I'm more of a fan of is identity shifting is more like identity shedding and it's shedding the beliefs and stories and getting to that true core and trying to bring that version of you out more. And when you're able to do that, now there's no act. Now there's no front and now you really put yourself out there. And when people like you, they love you because that's really you and there's no faking it. Guess what? I found that when people reject that version, it's almost a relief. It's not this deep seated like pain that we think we're going to feel. We think if someone really rejects the true us, it's going to hurt way more. But it's almost a relief like, oh, we would never vibe in a million years and I showed my true colors and I'm okay with that. So one big mistake when we're talking about creating the 2.0 you and identity shifting and reinventing yourself, replace that with reconnecting to yourself. Now for the next part of this video, 
I wanna go over some practical steps on how you can start to reinvent yourself by shifting your identity. We got three of them, let's rock and roll. You ever heard of the hero's journey? It's the story of all stories. Like literally when you see it, you cannot unsee it. And it kind of ruins a lot of the major movies you grew up with. I'm talking Spider-Man, uh, Lord of the Rings, The Matrix, Star Wars, Lion King even. They all follow the same script. And it's by Joseph Campbell, who studied myths since we developed language as humans sitting around a campfire. We've passed down stories. And he noticed that all the great stories tend to follow a 12 step process boiled down into three major things. Act one, act two, act three, where the hero is in his ordinary world. There's a call to adventure to step in and challenge themselves so they leave the home, step out into the unknown, before finally returning home with the prize. And what's interesting about the hero's journey is that yes, on paper, it looks like an external process. Okay, Neo got the call to adventure, he learns about the Matrix, he goes in, defeats all the agents, and then he comes back to save the world. But the real hero's journey is the internal transformation. Not what they got, but who they became. And so to draw a parallel between that whole storytelling arc and your life right now, that sums up exactly what you're doing in the phase you're in right now. You see, there's something in that first phase, the call to adventure. And it's where like Neo in the Matrix gets the call from the agents in the Matrix. Now it's been said that you are the hero of your own movie. And here's the best part. All those stories have one thing in common. There's the hero or the main character that refuses this call to adventure. Like they push it away. They want to step out of their comfort zone, but then something in them kind of pulls them back. And that's the very thing that most people get stuck in, not for a year, not for five years, but I'm talking 20 years. I'm talking 30 years. People are in this push pull. Like I want to leave my comfort zone and do that thing. I really know deep down inside I'm made for, but oh, let me backtrack because it got hard or I got pushed back from my friends and family, or I'm scared to put myself out there and look stupid or waste energy or money. I've always said that negative emotions are a call to action. You want to write that down. Your negative emotions, they're not bad. It doesn't mean you're wrong. It's a call to action. So the very first step you need to do to shift your identity and reinvent yourself, you need to answer the call, the call to adventure. Like if you feel burnt out, or if you feel drained, or if you feel tired, or even like depressed, that's your call to adventure. If you're looking to apply everything we talk about in these videos to change your life, check out our coaching program, Metamorphic. It's a full 10 week program, one-on-one -on -one shadow work sessions, interactive live calls, and a full badass community of 850 people in your corner to help. So if you're ready for a change, check out the link in the bio and start your journey today. Now in the hero's journey, there's phase two where the hero leaves their ordinary world and they're going through this journey. And what's interesting is they're always held back by the limitations. Like their skill level doesn't yet meet the challenge that they're up against. And so there's a lot of failures. There's them getting in their own head, questioning themselves, who am I? Until they eventually get beyond that and achieve what they set out to do. Much like that hero, I'm sure you felt this in your life. Who am I? to believe in myself like that. No, that's too arrogant. You hold yourself back. You self-sabotage or you get in your own way. This is what is known as your shadow. You know, one story on this, you know, we're talking a lot about like journeys and getting over yourself and getting beyond it on your hero's journey. I told you a little bit, so you know, I was in mom's basement in my 20s and I was consuming a lot of content, trying to learn how to build a business online. And one of the people who came up was Gary V. Um, and he, you know, goes on rants and I like a lot of his stuff, but one thing he said that like was a dagger to me and it messed me up. He was on a lecture and someone got up and they asked him about, I think it was life coaching. And they're like, you know, I'm in my twenties, I'm, I'm 22 and I'm trying to be a life coach. And he just like stops him. He's like, wait, you're 22 and you're trying to be a life coach. See the problem? No one's gonna take advice from a 22 year old about life when they haven't lived yet. And that again, dagger to me because that was about the age I was. And I'm like, okay, well, if the guy on stage says it, then it must be true. And mind you, I still wanted to start a business, 
But that put such a belief, such a sandbag tied around me that every time I went to film content or write something, I had that voice in the back of my head, no one's gonna take life advice, I'm too young. Right? That was the belief I had is I'm too young. Oh, maybe I just got to get older before I do this. Well, I'm too young. No one's going to listen to me. And so I carried that belief around for years until I finally snapped and got over it and cut the sandbag. And I'm so glad I did because it was how I was able, you know, years later to get out of my own way. And life's irony. This is the funny part. And as soon as I started my coaching business, you know what the number one belief that held people back a lot was? I'm too old. <laughs> I'm too old. Oh, my ship has sailed. It's too late. And then I started thinking about age. And it's like you're either thinking you're too young the whole time and like, oh, I just got to wait till I'm older. Or you're thinking I'm too old. Oh, man, it's a young person's game. I wish I had my youth back. There's never the time where you're like, I'm the right age. I'm in my prime. Yes, this is perfect. My reason behind telling you that is what would your life look like if you weren't drawn back by the two or three stories you're telling yourself. Like the two or three beliefs that you tell yourself daily and are holding you back, those are causing 80% of the damage. These can be things like, I'm not valuable, I need to perform, I need to win people over because I don't deserve the love. But man, it's impossible to reinvent yourself if you don't release. And now you're like, well, how do I do this? The first step is awareness. You have to be aware of what's holding you back. And there's really two ways you can gain this awareness. The first is done with yourself. Okay, this is like DIY. You can literally do this after this video. Make one of these a habit. Things like journaling, meditation, guided shadow work prompts. These are all ways that you can hold the mirror up to yourself and dig down and say like, what are my core stories holding me back? So the first way is with yourself, but the second way is with others. These are using therapy, coaching, and programs. I know there's a lot of like skepticism with programs out there and everyone thinks like courses are evil. I personally did not have that experience and I've invested hundreds of thousands in courses. Of course, there were some that were bad, but for me, they were a very cost effective way to get a lot of growth. And I'm not trying to pitch you anything right here. You know, I, whether you do ours or not, that doesn't matter. I'd encourage you to explore like programs because for me, when I look back on my growth spurts, a lot of them came when I was in a program, whether it was business or personal. So if you're looking to like get over yourself, I think it helps to have some sort of structure in place. So we've spoke about reinventing yourself and answering the call. We've also spoken about releasing that shadow self, or at least starting to explore the parts that will get in your way. Let's talk about the third thing. And this is perhaps the most important thing that you need to do daily. There's a myth out there of this one and done self improvement, right? Like if I can just do the one exercise, I never have to do it again. Well, the hero's journey is not supposed to be easy. You're not just like going on a stroll through a field, skipping along, like there's shit that wants to kill you. There's people that want to stop you. There's real stuff that happens along the way. And without those real challenges, the movie would be terrible. Like who wants to watch a movie where everything went their way and it worked out? How it would suck. It's the same thing with your life. And so along this way, it is so important for you to embrace these challenges by reconfirming that you're on the right path, that you are this version that you're shifting into, like this 2.0 you that's coming, you reconfirm it every day. Just like going to the gym, you don't go to the gym once and expect to look in the mirror and see that version of you that's fit, healthy, muscular, but you keep going regardless. And if you keep going, eventually you look in the mirror and the image starts to change. And then pretty soon you keep it up long enough and you are that person. So I'm bringing this up because for you, like if this new version of yourself that you're experimenting with feels like there's a little pushback, that's okay, that's natural. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It's supposed to feel uncomfy at first, but there's one thing you can do that will make all of this feel really natural. Reconfirming this version of you. A very practical tip that I've done is whenever you're adopting a new version of yourself or a new trait, start stacking wins for it. Like keep a win log. Uh, you wanna be more confident. Instead of being like, well, I wanna be something I'm not, look in your recent past or when you're going about your week and start 
writing down and tracking the times you are. I am confident, you know, I spoke my mind in that conversation or I didn't withdraw or I embraced that challenge. Write a little win. And the more you stack these wins for this new version, that's gonna outweigh this old version and pretty soon this just is who you are. It's the same thing with like YouTube. Um, you know, you wanna film a video. So instead of being like, well, I, I, I don't film videos, I'm trying to be a YouTuber. As soon as you start doing something that is in the camp of being a YouTuber, you write that win down. Okay, I filmed the video today. I bought a camera, I outlined it. Again, this evidence is gonna outweigh this evidence, and then this is just who you are. Dream body, track all your workouts, keep a progress log, write all your food, like that stuff right there is how you stack the deck and you stack the evidence in your favor. So now you know you need to reinvent yourself, release your shadow self, and reconfirm this 2.0. You do those three steps and that, my friend, is how you reinvent yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you dug this video in the formats. If you want another one, I'll put it up right here. Perfect follow-up. Keep the party going. See you in the next one. Stop settling, start living. See ya.